It's been a decades-long debate between Apple enthusiasts and, well, pretty much everyone else. Is the iPhone or the Samsung phone superior? Is the Google Pixel any good? What about BlackBerry? Rest in peace. <laughs> you could come at this question from a hundred different angles, but today we're gonna look at the differences between privacy and security on Apple iOS devices and all the different Android-based devices. Hey guys, it's Josh from All Things Secure, a brand dedicated to providing straightforward tips and advice related to your privacy and security. Make sure you subscribe. Before I was an iPhone user, I had one of those awesome Nokia brick phones that I honestly kind of miss. You know, I think they're making a comeback now, aren't they? Anyway, I recognize that I might have a bit of a bias in this particular debate since I've never owned a quality Android phone. So I brought in Pete Matheson, a fellow tech YouTuber who has some great experience on the Android side and lots of videos about it on his YouTube channel. I also wanna give a shout out to the Shared Security Podcast who did an episode on this very topic last month. Both Pete's YouTube channel and this particular podcast episode are linked in the description below if you want to learn more. Oh. And if you're one of those people that won't be happy with any option that involves Apple, Google, or any other big tech company, stick around to the end of the video because I have a little something for you as well. Okay, to properly compare the security and privacy native to both iOS and Android devices, we're gonna cover four specific areas of concern. The operating system, user tracking, native apps, and the physical devices themselves. So let's start at the beginning with the operating system. The operating system, also known as the OS, is the software that runs or operates everything on your device. If you don't have an OS, your phone won't boot up and function. Now, there are a lot of things that could be said here, but when it comes to your privacy and security, there's one primary principle at play here. The more links that there are in a chain, the more opportunities there are to introduce a weak link. What do I mean by that? Well, what Apple introduced with its iPhone back in 2007 was an integration of hardware and software, which is something that we tend to take for granted nowadays. This native integration allows for a lot more control, which I can I admit, that can be both good and frustrating. But as far as security and privacy is concerned, most people refer to what Apple has built as a walled garden. That tight control over the iOS and its security is in stark contrast to Android phones, whose operating systems are often three levels deep. First, you have the foundation of the Android OS, followed by the phone's manufacturer's configuration of that OS, which could be uh, Samsung, OnePlus, Motorola, any of those others. And finally, there's sometimes even a layer from the network provider, like Verizon, Virgin Mobile, etc. Each layer adds a bit of complexity and vulnerability to the operating system, not to mention a lot of other variables that Pete even shared with me. Whereas on Android, it's very, very different from you know, platform to platform. Some of the phones even have adverts embedded within the system itself at the operating system level. So it's just scrolling through settings, you're scrolling through adverts. The last thing I'll add in regard to the operating system is the frequency of security patches and updates. In this case, you actually want updates to happen as soon as they need to. And here too, even for Pete's Google Pixel phone, the monthly OS updates aren't very reliable. And even though those monthly updates have come out every single month, they've actually delayed some of them for whatever reason. Whereas I checked and when I picked up my iPhone 13 Pro, the number of updates I've had since launch day, like minor updates, major updates, new features, and mostly obviously bug fixes, they just seem to be a lot more on top of releasing those smaller bug fixes to fix things. Okay, so that's the operating system. What about user tracking? Unfortunately, the features that make modern smartphones so attractive are exactly the same ones that make them scary when seen from the lens of personal privacy. You've got an alarmingly accurate GPS sensor, a camera and a microphone that can watch and listen to you wherever you're at, and of course, so much data about how and where you use your device. So how does Apple's iOS compare to Android in terms of user tracking? Well, as far as third-party apps are concerned, Apple has what it calls an app sandbox, which limits what kind of data apps can access and what parts of the root system it can use. If you use an iPhone, you've also probably seen those pop-ups asking if you want to allow an app to use your camera, uh, your location, or even just track you across devices. And unless it's absolutely necessary for the operation of the app, your answer should usually be no. What about Android? 
Well, Pete shared with me that a privacy sandbox is coming, but with Google, there's a bit of a conflict of interest. Google have announced they are making similar changes to that that Apple are making now, but they're implementing it in two years time because of course Google sits on both sides of the fence. That fence he's referring to is the divide between the consumers who buy their phones and the advertisers who make up the bulk of Google's revenue. It's really a difficult balancing act. I will add that Apple still has that kind of balancing act as well, but for them, it's more on the regulatory side. Last year, there was a bit of a dust up when Apple quietly announced that they would start scanning the images uploaded to iCloud to monitor for child sexual abuse material. I did a whole video about it that you can watch right here, but in the end, Apple delayed that scanning update because of the vocal ba uh, backlash from privacy advocates. All that to say, when using either iOS or Android, I think it's best to simply assume that there is some form of tracking that is or will start happening soon. And before you start talking trash about Apple or Google, just remember that even if you use the dumbest of dumb phones, a network provider can still triangulate your position with or without GPS capabilities. The best thing you can do is just make sure that you're only giving permission for apps to use specific types of data or specific parts of your phone when they absolutely need it. Continuing on, we're looking at text messages sent on iOS versus Android. Now to start, you need to understand that the old school SMS text message is not and never has been, never will be encrypted. Anything sent via SMS text message, even on a modern Apple or Android device, is not private. However, each service has its own closed off network that offers end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. For Apple, that's iMessage. For Android, well, actually it's different depending on the manufacturer, but they do have encrypted messaging. It's that blue chat bubble versus the green chat bubble. And the one you use often depends on how many of your friends and family are using Apple or Android devices. Listen, here's my two cents. I use the native text message feature on my phone every day for all kinds of regular communication. But when it comes to anything sensitive or truly personal, I prefer to skip iOS and Android altogether in favor of using a third-party app like Signal. It offers always-on encryption, and you might be surprised how many of your friends and family already have a Signal account. The final piece of this puzzle is the device itself. When you're comparing iOS and Android, you have to take into account what I said earlier. Apple controls everything, whereas Android does not. And in this case, the advantage actually might lean toward Android here. As Pete says. It's very tempting when you see like the latest, you know, the, the, I've got the S22 um, Ultra here, and there's like three lenses on it. There's like a hundred times ridiculous zoom on it. There's these features you just don't see on the Apple platform until maybe two, three, four years time when Apple get to make kind of their version, uh, their improved version that, that works very well. And Pete's right. If you want cutting edge devices with the latest features, you definitely go with Android since Apple's gonna take their time perfecting those features before it gets released onto an iPhone. But here's another aspect of this debate that most people don't talk about. When I was living in China, one of the security measures that got put in place were these device checks that would happen all the time. Police would stop us on the side of the road and plug these devices into our phones that researchers later found would just scan the phone for certain types of material. And then I was always worried that they were able to implant some kind of tracker, although I know that might be a little bit paranoid. The point is this, it doesn't matter how secure or private your actual hardware of the phone is. If you get stopped, by police or by somebody on the street and forced to unlock your phone. In this case, when they plugged in the phone, I would be required to press that button that says, I trust this device. I had no choice. At that point, all bets are off. And here's where I wanna make the most important point for this video. In the middle of this debate between iOS and Android, I think the most important thing you need to remember is that honestly, it really doesn't matter. Yes, I think that Apple offers a few advantages over Android, but at the end of the day, if you're relying on your mobile devices so much that you're storing sensitive data, intimate pictures, or access to all of your financial data, then you're creating a risk that supersedes which operating system you use. And that includes alternative operating systems. Speaking of alternatives, what if you're looking at both Android and iOS and thinking to yourself, 
as long as Apple and Google have control over these operating systems, I'll never trust any claim of privacy. I hear you. I really do. I may be comfortable with an Apple phone, but that doesn't mean that you need to be. And if that's the case, you do have some options, including uh, Linux-based systems like Tizen, or I think it's Tizen, I'm not sure, and PureOS, or even de-Googled Android projects like Graphene OS, which I know has gained in popularity recently. Keep in mind, what you may gain in terms of privacy by using these alternative operating systems, you also lose in terms of support, uh, sometimes app availability and ease of installation and general use. So what do you think? Are you sticking with iOS, Android, or are you gonna take that leap into the crazy world of alternative mobile operating systems? Leave a comment down below with your answer and don't just tell me which one, you've gotta tell me why you made that choice.